Brian Babin is a lifelong resident of East Texas. He is the honorable congressman who serves Texas's 36th congressional district. Given his passion for our great nation, Dr. Babin joined the Texas Army National Guard and the U.S. Army Reserve as an artillery airman at an early age while working to get his education. Following his graduation from dental school at the University of Texas, Dr. Babin was commissioned as a captain in the United States Air Force and stationed overseas at Ramstein, Germany. Upon his return home, Dr. Babin became heavily influenced, involved with the legislative body and po policy making. He recently served as an organizer in Tyler County in Texas and has served as a keynote speaker for numerous patriotic and veterans events and rallies throughout Texas. Dr. Babin is committed to, for, to making America safe, strong, economically secure for its future, and a beacon of liberty across the globe, and a strong proponent of continuing talks with North Korea to address human rights issues. It is my honor and pleasure to introduce Congressman Babin, who cares and has concerns about the Korean Peninsula, which he has visited numerous occasions. Thank you. Right behind you. Thank you so very, very much. It's, uh, I'm proud to be here with you and standing shoulder to shoulder. Uh, it's an honor to speak to a group of people so dedicated to the Christian mission and to Christian values. But it's even more impressive to see those values manifested in the work that you all do on behalf of the people of Korea, both North and South. And I'd like to thank Mr. Sam Kim, uh, Executive Director of KCC, leadership of KCC, all of you folks. Uh, the thousands of Korean pastors around America and in my great state of Texas and all you do here today for your commitment to human rights in North Korea and around the world. Uh, I'd especially like to thank Joseph Kim, a North Korean refugee who not only managed to escape the oppressive regime there but also found the courage to share his incredible story. I'm very grateful for the attention that the Trump administration has paid to North Korean issues. As complicated and as confusing as the U.S.-North uh, Korea negotiations have been, for the first time in many, many years, we have seen a lessening of nuclear tensions and a slow reestablishment of ties between North and South Korea. A great step uh, to forward in normalizing relations between uh, these two countries. And while military security and northern denuclearization remain priorities for this administration, we must remember that in addition to safety, the people of Korea long for an end to the continuing family separations, an end to the incarceration of a quarter of a million North Koreans illegally held in labor camps, and an end to the torture and execution, which is used as tools to maintain control of that population. I strongly empathize. I strongly empathize with the children of North Korea, innocent people who are born into a dangerous country that lacks proper nourishment and access to health care. Often given up by or separated from their parents, many become forced laborers. The fruits of their efforts sold to foreign entities to help finance a despotic regime. I have had the honor of visiting South Korea and the DMZ, and I've seen and heard firsthand of the devastating effects of the division between these two Koreas, their economies, their peoples, and their futures. In the surreal setting of the DMZ, you can see them from these pictures. I looked across the border and I understood why power-starved North Korea is truly called the dark country, as these photos show. But this situation cannot be accepted quietly. You can see me looking, looking out the window here, or looking away from the window, and I'm having my photograph taken of, by North Koreans who are standing outside the window. You remind us, and uh, year after year here in Washington, D.C., it's so important for what you're doing because you remind us in Congress that for all that we hear about the state of negotiations and missile tests, there are a, there's the human factor. Forty million Koreans living in fear for their lives. And then we as a free nation have a responsibility to speak out and to be the voice of the oppressed for these people. You remind us that though North Korea is thousands of miles away from us, the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. still apply. Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. So I want to thank you for what you do in Congress and for the people 
of the Korea, of both Koreas, especially those in North Korea. May God bless you and continue your mission and your work. We cannot thank you enough. God bless America and God bless you. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Hello, this book is Under the Sky. It's written by Joseph Kim himself, and it contains the life stories of Joseph Kim. And I would like to introduce you to Joseph Kim right here. All right, yeah. The book is about him. I'm so proud. You're ready to read this book. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Can we get Congressman Cisneros' team up here, please? No, no, no. Thank you for being the voice for the voiceless. We present you to a shout for human rights in North Korea t-shirt. <laughs> I will crown you wear it. Uh, Congressman Babin, we would like to present you with an award. Um, Representative Babin, thank the you for shouting for human rights in North Korea for our brothers and sisters.